from JJ Hat Center. Today I'm not wearing a hat. Um, so I want to show you some stuff about a hat. Uh, I need to just kind of look at this hat and, uh, you know, every single little bit of it. Let me take the guitar off. No, I mean, it doesn't matter. It's a guitar. We're going to look at everything. Um, you notice there's something dangling from it. Um, some people know what this is. Um, probably a lot of you guys know if you're watching this show. This is, um, this is called the wind cord. And uh, it's a little hard to see in this light. But what it is, it's basically an elastic cord that's attached to the hat right under the bow, right there. It dangles. And there's a loop. Okay, it's a slip knot kind of thing. Basically, this thing um, rides around the perimeter of your hat, and a lot of people get confused by it, and they sort of tie them in knots and stuff. They don't know how to work it. You just, you know, it's a loop, sort of inside of a loop, like a slip knot. It lies underneath the uh, the ribbon band. Man, the light is bad. There it is. See? It's the elastic. So what you do is you keep it there, the wind cord, the little button kind of lives somewhere near the uh, the bow. See it there next to the bow, the little button? That's where it lives, with the elastic riding below the ribbon. And um, on a windy day or a stormy day, maybe it's raining or something, the idea is to take that little loop off the hat. I'm going to take it off again now. And when you're wearing the hat, that button goes through your lapel buttonhole, you know, that little carnation hole you have on your coats and jackets. That is meant for wind cords. So I guess in the old days, a lot of people had, you know, hats on uh, years ago, and a lot of people carry umbrellas, briefcases, things like that, and uh, probably didn't have a spare hand to hold their hat, you know, like this all the way home on a windy day. So you anchored it through your little buttonhole. In case it blows off, then it's got a little tether. So it's uh, like a bun bungee, sort of like those leashes you have on your skate on your um, surfboard, so it doesn't get away from you and roll into the mud or into a you know puddle in the street, get run over. And that does happen. We get people whose cars get run over, or they get blown into puddles all the time. Mostly because their sizing is a little off. Um, if your hat is too loose, it's going to blow off. Sometimes we're between sizes, and you need to do a little adjusting. Let me see if I could do something with this light. Oh man, it's so dark. Yeah, let's try to adjust this. Get a little more light on the subject here. Yeah. That's even worse. Yeah, okay. All right, so the deal is most of us are between sizes. We tend to be to some extent, and when you go to a hat shop, if you're 59 and a quarter, a lot of times they'll just give you a 59, you know, you know, a little stretch, or they'll give you a 60, you know. The, the reality, you know, you might have to get a 60 and tighten it up a little bit. Take the 60 and shim it, pick up the leather sweatband in the back by that little bow inside, and then you put a little product in there, like a piece of um, what they call weather stripping. It's kind of like foam with a little sticky backing, so like an adhesive back. You could use that. Um, you could use this product they sell uh, at our shop called a sweat wick or sweat band. Um, it's basically um, the same thing, but it's cotton, so it can go against your skin and stuff. Where re regular weather stripping is foam, and the foam is good to put under the leather sweat band, not touching the skin. But if you have a situation where you want to put it on the outside, going right against your, you know, your head, you can't use foam because it's just, it's bad, you know. You want cotton, something absorbent and comfortable. So you buy this thing, um, we sell them for five bucks, but I think you could get them on the, uh, on Amazon called Cap Ban New. And, um, they're really expensive to buy a whole box of them. Well, not that expensive, but, you know, it's, it's a lot. So, you know, we sell them for five bucks each, and that'll last you a few months until you want to freshen up, put a new one in there. But um, generally, if you have a leather sweat band, you can hide the foam underneath and just forget about it. Now, let's say you don't have a leather sweat band in your hat. 
let's say you have a very thin ribbon sweatband or no sweatband at all or something, um, you might have to use this cap in there because um, it's going to be touching your head and stuff. So that's a good product. Um, you could get regular weather stripping with a sticky back. There's something called Polyfoam uh, Weather Seal. You could get that, I'm sure, online, Amazon, anywhere. A hardware store, you get something like a uh, three-eighth of an inch, half inch, uh, anything like that. It's, it doesn't matter. Any Anywhere from, I guess, quarter inch up to five-eighths of an inch is good. But uh, take a little piece, maybe about that long, six inches long, maybe four inches. You pick up the band, you put it inside the leather or inside the uh, felt, you flip it down, and that's it, the hat is tighter. Now, a lot of times I don't want to put it against the leather because if you ever want to remove it, take little bits of leather with it sometimes. Um, but I'm going to say it's generally going to stay in there permanently. You don't usually take these things out, but if you're concerned and you want it to come out cleanly, I put it against the felt, not against the leather. You know? And um, you know, generally when it's under the sweatband, you just forget about it and that's it. Um, when you're putting it, the sweatband inside the hat, touching your skin, a lot of times you're using it as a sweatband too. Um, it's a barrier to keep perspiration from sweating up your hats basically. So um, if you manage to sweat through this entire hat, this ribbon is there to catch that. That's basically the point where it makes contact, the ribbon. That's why you always have a dark ribbon and it's wide. Um, it's usually black, brown, something dark, and it's usually pretty wide. This is the point of contact where your head meets the hat right here, not below, not above. So when you sweat through an entire hat, if it goes through the leather sweatband or whatever ribbons, it'll get caught in this ribbon and that will wick it around the salt to the whole Basically, you know, keeping it away from the felt um, because if that stuff gets on the felt, you can't remove it. So when you see your sweatband is covered with like white salty stains or it's got like some kind of sweat residue on it, it's a sign telling you you've got to put in either one of those sweat pads or you got to change your band or both. Um, of course, the next step, it's going to leave a ring of sweat around the brim and around the felt, and people come and ask them to get it clean so casually, and you know, we don't do that. You know, It's just not something that's easily done. There's a couple of people who use some sort of acid, I think you could nail it away to, but I don't really want to dip my hats in caustic chemicals and then put that like over like where my brain is and stuff. It's just, uh, I don't know, it's not worth it for me. I'd rather either wear a you know, hat with a sweat pad in it or just get a new hat. It's just mailing it to this guy, you know, and having all, it's going to cost just as much as getting a new hat. So I don't recommend having it cleaned chemically. Um, I recommend changing the bands and prevention. Prevention is the only way to deal with uh, sweat stains and stuff. Uh, once it's on the felt, forget it. Um, sometimes we can give you a wider ribbon and cover it, but we can't get the sweat stains out of the brown or out of the crown. Um, it's just... It's too late. You know? and people are so disappointed and just so, you know, like broken when I tell them that, you know, expecting me to just clean it and stuff. But uh, yeah, we can reshape your hat and we could dust it off and do some light cleaning. We could get some very light stains out, you know, surface stains, anything that we could buff out. But if it's something that's coming from inside the hat and then sweating towards the outside, permeating through inside to out, no matter how much I buff out, it's still staying through through the entire felt. There's no way to get it out. That's different from like, you know, let's say I have a white felt hat and I get some fingerprints on it like this. Basically, I could take some very fine sandpaper and just buff out that top layer, buff it out, buff it out, use finer sandpaper, use a stiff brush, use a soft brush, and then that's it. The top layer of felt is gone and the hat is clean. But anything that comes from within the hat, sweat stains, basically, um, it's just impossible. We don't do that, and um, I don't know anybody who does. Um, I only saw one time a guy said that he mailed his hat away to some person, um, and they used some sort of acid that they soaked the hat in, and it got it clean. You know? 
So there is a way to clean these things chemically, but I think you need a special spray booth. The EPA has regulations, you know, there's, uh, I'm sure you gotta have a respirator and all kinds of ventilation, this and that. And uh, we just don't get involved with it because generally it's just not necessary. And I don't want that on my hands anyway. It's just, uh, just not worth it. Just do the right thing. Prevention is all you can do. Again, um, we do sell these things for five bucks. They're called Cap Ban New, C A P B A N N U. Three words Cap Banu, like Cat Baloo. You could get it like that on Amazon if you want to buy like a whole box of them. It's 20 something. Um, you'll save money if you're using lots and lots of them. Um, or you can buy it from us. I think it's on our website, jjhatcenter.com. Uh, probably called a sweatband. I think sweatband we call it. And they're five dollars. So um, we don't call it cap band, we call it sweatband. So those are really, really good. Every hat that I work in, I put that on the inside right against my forehead. It's kind of like an old school tennis sweatband um, type of thing. It just keeps the sweat from even touching the hat. It never even reaches the hat. So if you have a hat that's really expensive or you super, super want to preserve that thing, don't want it to get old, like a, I don't know, thousand dollar Monte Cristi or something, you, you put the sweat wick in, you know, it's going to keep it alive for a long time. The only thing about these, the sweat wicks, the cap and news, um, or sweat bands, they, let's say you have a leather band here, okay? A leather band is very comfortable. You can take a handkerchief, dry it, and it's very dry and clean. Um, the sweat band is absorbent, so let's say you cool off at a restaurant, you're hanging out, you know, having some dessert, and you're in the air conditioning, you put your hat back on, the sweat band is still wet, you know, kind of wet from your sweat, and it's cold from the AC and stuff. It's just kind of like, it's not that sanitary, but it doesn't feel that good, you know, being wet, it's kind of like, I don't know. So you got to change these pads, you know, a couple of times during the summer, maybe once, twice. I'm going to say I'll go through maybe two pads in the summer, or maybe three sometimes. But, um, yeah, they're not the most comfortable thing. So what I like to do is I slap them in towards the end of my hat's life when I start to need it. Like if I start to see the smallest little sweat, piece of sweat, kind of like you know, a bit of stain coming through, okay, I slap it in there. But for the first few months when the hat is new, I like to have that leather sweat band, you know, which to me is more sanitary. And then when it's getting like to the point where, okay, I think I need a sweat with, then I slap it in right before anything gets damaged or, or you know, the stain. Okay, this is an entire video about staining and sweat stains. It's pretty gross, I know. But it had to be said. Um, I wanted to talk about that. There's various things on this hat. Um, there is a leather sweatband, which is the main barrier to block sweat, okay? That's your main deal. Without a leather sweatband, you're gonna sweat through it quicker. The next thing is the outer bands. That is there to, um, you know, whip the sweat away into itself, around the left, the right, and not up and down, so it doesn't reach the felt. But once that thing is full to capacity, it starts to go into the felt and you get a ring of sweat. So you've got to change that band when it's starting to look dirty or used. Um, it's telling you it's time. Um, the third thing would be the lining. There's generally a silk lining inside. I usually take my linings out because I have a very full head of hair and I don't leave uh, sweat stains on the crown of a hat ever. But if you have a shaved head or super low buzz cut, um, if you're balding, you have a bald spot, or any, anything like that, you know, just really short, short hair, like that kind of tennis ball stubble stuff, um, there's a very good chance, even just a very short haircut, there's a good chance you're going to make a sweat stain on top of your head and it can permeate through. Um, that's why you leave the satin linings inside a hat. Um, it's the only reason. And then basically you take it and you throw it out after a certain amount of years, you get a new one and the hat lives on, lives on, lives on. Um, you can take that out and try to wash it by hand maybe, but you won't need to do that for a while. This one, I took it out. There's no lining in there, but the lining, uh, satin lining is the third thing that's going to protect your hat from perspiration stains. So the inner band, the sweat band, the outer band, the ribbon band, and the silk 
satin lining on the inside are your three main defenses. Um, on certain hats, uh, summer hats, it's too hot to put a lining. Um, what they might do is put a tip sticker right in the crown. It's a little sticker that's where your head makes contact, like right there on the inside of the crown. There's a little circle or a triangular sticker. Sometimes it's a plastic one. Sometimes it's more like a kind of a nylon y sort of a sticker. But it's there to keep sweat from permeating through. And that's um, just the contact. Contact points are here and around. So that's what they keep covered on a, uh, on a straw hat because a silk lining would just not breathe. And the whole idea of a straw is that you're using like a, a grass, which is super, super breathable. Um, natural materials with the air, perspiration, everything, you know, just comes in, out, and um, it's not weatherproofed. Um, people ask, are these waterproof? But they purposely don't. The idea is that it breathes. It's natural and it's very porous. Um, a rain hat is waterproof and they're super cheap. You know, you can get that too. But a Panama hat, no. It's supposed to not be waterproof. It's supposed to be really cool and breathable and, you know, little holes and stuff for the air to go through. I'm going to say that's usually enough, a tip sticker on top and a band around here. If you sweat a lot, you should get a leather sweat band here. But I wouldn't put a silk lining inside a, um, a straw hat. I would basically just get the sweat wick in the front. And then if you're completely bald or if you have super short hair, put a sweat wick in front and the back. They're, they're really good products. Um, they're good. I work in them every day. Thank you.